In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessings, beloved in Christ. Today is the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. I am Father Pax of the Via Christi Society, coming to you from Assumption Parish, South Oropush. Our reflection is on the first principle of free will. In the first reading from Isaiah 55, verse 6 to 9, the Lord says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, and continues saying, Yes, the heavens are as high above the earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. Here a question arises. If we are made in the image and likeness of God, why would he prophesy through the prophet Isaiah the distinctness of his ways from our ways? The will of man is the force behind his self-preservation. Self-preservation is said to be the strongest human instinct. Yet, in the second reading, St. Paul is overwhelmed with joy and excitement for the love of God. His piety and reverence has roots that go so deep within his soul such that he is uncertain as to whether he should die and be with his God or stay on earth. This mystical experience, which is beyond the instinct of self-preservation, was seen even in the life of St. Christina the Astonishing, who chose, after being led to the heavenly glory, to return to earth and suffer many tribulations for the reparation of sins to save souls. The Christian experience is meant to lead us to an extraordinary resignation of the will which imitating Christ helps us and others to be more like God and more ready for salvation. For this to happen, our ways will have to be aligned to God's ways by aligning our wills to His. The submission of the will to God is popular in Christian spirituality and often reflected in songs. A great inhibition to this though, which is often not considered or taken seriously, is the refusal to allow God's free will in oneself. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 20 verse 1 to 16, we read about a landowner employing laborers throughout an entire day for the day's wage of one den denarius. At seventeen TT dollars an hour for twelve hours, two hundred and four TT dollars could be today's equivalent of a denarius. If those who came late up to the eleventh hour, that would be five o'clock in the evening, got two hundred and four dollars, hence the expectation from those who had been there from the early hours to get more at the end of the day. The reading does not identify, though, the amount of work that would be required of the laborers, but that did not matter. They were in the will of the Master. As St. Thomas More said, the things we pray for, good Lord, give us grace to labor for. Basically, they are covered. The expectations sounded fair and even just except for one thing, one small caveat, the earlier agreement of one denarius or $204 a day still stands and the possibility of a new agreement depends only on the landowner. The landowner is free. In fact, his freedom precedes theirs as the owner of the land whom they work for. The landowner is God. And he is not offering one denarius or $240. He is offering a salvation, eternal life. As in the gospel, this salvation is offered to all and all the time. It is offered and it would be offered to everyone who is willing to call on God from their hearts. An acceptance of God is important because scripture says, For as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become sons and daughters of God. St. Padre Pio said, You don't have to be worthy. You only have to be willing. As long as we are willing to work in God's vineyard, we can rest assured that, he would, that we would experience God's justice 
at his infinite mercy and do so with joy as we await God's immeasurable gift of salvation. Willingness must start with understanding that God himself is free. He is the ultimate free will. We cannot force God to do things our way. On the contrary, our way can never be fully realized without God's way. And our will can never be fully realized without being submitted to God's will. The workers in the vineyard must treasure God's will above everything. The workers in God's vineyard must trust that his free will is just. And thus our free will can only be truly just like God's if we trust his free will in its justice. So beloved, let us do this this weekend. Have a blessed 25th Sunday in ordinary time. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.